The elective caesarean section is one that's planned in advance. The decision to have a caesarean section is made between the patient and the obstetricians. Once we are given a list of, of ladies who are going to have elective caesarean sections, we then are, invite them to come and see us in the anaesthetic clinic uh, within a week of the date of their caesarean section. We will give you two types of tablets. Um, one's an anti-acid tablet, one's an anti-sickness tablet and we'll ask you to take one the night before you're coming in for your caesarean and both tablets in the morning of your caesarean section. That just reduces the risk of you feeling sick during the operation and makes it less likely that we'll have problems with, with you having acid in your tummy. Our standard um, anaesthetic for an elective caesarean section is what we call a combined spinal and epidural anaesthetic and that's both a spinal anaesthetic and an epidural. When you come Come in, you'll be uh, directed to one of our rooms, our assessment rooms on delivery suite, um, and then you'll be visited by a variety of people. This will include the anaesthetist that will be looking after you on the day, um, the surgeons, the obstetricians will come and see you and go through their consent form for the operation with you, um, the midwives will come in and have a listen to your baby, um, and some of the theatre staff will come and make sure that you have the gown and, and that you're all ready to go. The first thing that we always have to do before an anaesthetic is put in a drip or a cannula into um, one of the veins, usually in the hand or the arm. Um, this is a safety thing, um, so if there's any problems from the anaesthetic that we can give fluids and drugs and medicines down into that drip quickly. Anaesthetists will dress up almost like the surgeons do for the operation um, and they clean the back with something that's really quite cold, makes people jump. Um, and that's just to reduce the risk of introducing any infection um, into the injection site in the back. To do uh, the spinal and epidural injections, um, we have to get the lady usually to sit on the edge of the bed and they have to bend forward slightly and curl up. We say a bit like an angry cat or if you're carrying heavy shopping and what this does, it just opens up the spaces between the bones in the back. We put some local anaesthetic into the skin of the back. Now that does sting a little bit when it first goes in and we then put some further into the back but then makes the area nice and numb for having the injection done afterwards. I remember I remember some really cold solution going on my back and they said that was just to clean the area and then the, I think the stingy bit may have been the local anaesthetic just to numb that area. When um, the injection is being done it shouldn't be painful, um, you should be able to feel a pushing or maybe a slight aching feeling in the back and if you feel any other pains you should tell the anaesthetist that's doing your anaesthetic. The spinal anaesthetic is just an injection which is then removed, the epidural is a really fine small tube um, which is then left in the back, um, there's nothing sharp left in, um, it's just a small plastic tube. We then, once the injection's in, we get the ladies to lie down quite quickly. That's because the local anaesthetic works with gravity. The ladies start to feel um, some warmness in the bottom, um, tingling pins and needles in the legs, and then their legs feel really heavy and difficult to move around. While the numbness is coming on, which usually takes up to about 10 minutes, we also have to put a, a catheter, which is a small tube, into the lady's bladder because the bladder is very close to where the operation is taking place and we want it empty and out of the way. There's always a small risk that the anaesthetic won't make you numb enough for the uh, surgeons to start the operation. We check the block very thoroughly. Um, we do this using a, a freezing cold spray. The anaesthetist, she tested the anaesthetic with some cold spray she said it was. She tested it first up here on my um, near my collarbone and it was really cold and then she said she was spraying it up both sides of my legs and up onto my tummy and I couldn't feel any of that at all. It was quite quite strange but reassuring. <laughs> if for some reason that numbness isn't good enough we then have some other options to go through which might involve another injection or an epidural um, and we always have the backup option of a general anaesthetic if we really need to. When the injection's done and the numbness is coming on from both an epidural and a spinal anaesthetic, it is normal for your blood pressure to drop. We keep a really close eye on the blood pressure in theatre and you have a blood pressure cuff that will inflate and deflate on your arm every minute. But sometimes people's blood pressure drops quicker than other times and if you feel dizzy or sick at any point it's probably because of your blood pressure. Um, we have uh, lots of medicines that we can give into the drip to help the blood pressure back up. It might drop my blood pressure but there was some medication that they could give to increase my blood pressure. Um, might feel a bit dizzy 
but long term, very, very rare that anything long term would come of it in res with regard to moving my legs or anything like that. Other risks are very generally very rare and that's why we choose um, this kind of anaesthetic as our first choice um, and they include things like a severe headache and a very small risk of damage to the nerves themselves. It's most likely to be a patch of numbness on the leg somewhere that would go in its own over a few weeks to months. That happens to about 1 in 10 to 15,000 people. The risk of it being a more severe or permanent weakness and numbness of the legs is incredibly rare in the region of 1 in 100,000. Once we're happy that the anaesthetic is working and that the catheter's in, we then get the birthing partners to come in. They have to wear a hat and a gown and they come and sit up at the head end um, with you and with your anaesthetist. My partner, he was brought in and he came and sat next to me. He was allowed to bring his camera in to take pictures for the baby when the baby was born. Um, and it was just lovely because he could sit there and hold my hand. They put a drape up so I couldn't see anything really over the top was like a little tent and that was um, across my partner as well so he couldn't see over. And I just remember feeling really excited um, and I didn't feel scared, I just was, I was really happy that I was going to see my baby soon. It's normal to feel pressure, pulling, pushing, that kind of thing. Some people describe it like a rummaging type sensation. And your anaesthetist will be with you to reassure you um, if you need them to at any point during the operation. It's much more common to feel that rummaging sensation before the baby's born, which is usually within the first five or ten minutes of the operation. I remember them saying there might be some tugging, might feel some rummaging in my tummy, and they were reassuring me all the time if I was to feel sick at any point or anything felt strange just to talk, just to let them know. So I felt reassured because there was always somebody there with me. So when the baby's born, um, it may go over to a resuscitaire, which is a, an area where there's um, heating and light for the midwives and sometimes the baby doctors to look at the baby to make sure that they're okay. Then once they're, they're happy that the baby is, is okay and safe, they'll bring the baby over to have cuddles and skin to skin with mum. Uh, it's a bit awkward because you will be lying flat on your back and it's very difficult to do any kind of feeding during theatre because of that reason, but cuddles are, are fine and, and your partner can help you um, support your baby and cuddle them. So the baby was born and they took him away over to the side and they did their checks on the, um, to make sure he was breathing, he was, um, everything was okay there. Rubbed baby down, wrapped him up in a, in a towel and um, let me cuddle him first before they weighed him. So it wasn't, wasn't much of a delay between baby being born and having his checks and then being brought to me. Once the baby's born, the operation takes a bit longer, but there's much less of the rummaging sensations there. Depending on your medical history and, and allergies, of course, uh, we will sometimes uh, advise that you have a painkilling tablet put into your bottom at the end of the operation, and that works really well as the numbness starts to wear off. You're then written up for some regular tablets of painkillers and some other tablets and syrup that you can ask for if you need them afterwards. After a caesarean section, the epidural is left in usually for around six to eight hours. After the caesarean, you go through to our observation area, which is a ward um, just next to delivery suite. Um, where we keep an eye on all the ladies who have recently had operations. And the reason for leaving the epidural in is we can give further pain relief down the epidural um, and that can be done on this ward. Um, once you are recovered enough, then the epidural is removed. Um, having the epidural removed is, is very straightforward and a painless procedure. Usually within three or four hours of you leaving the operating theatre, um, your legs will start to be able to use them again and start to gently walk around. It was about an hour to two hours afterwards and it was, a, it was slowly a feeling in my legs, that was what I remember coming back. It was like a ting, tingling feeling again, like when they put the injection in the first time. And then slowly, with time, there was a bit more discomfort in in the tummy area where they'd, um, they'd done the cesarean section and you could feel the tingling in the legs and then I could start wiggling my toes and do a bit more there. The first 24 hours particularly after a cesarean section um, can be quite uncomfortable. Um, most women cope really well on the, um, the tablets that we give them for pain relief 
but it's important that once your numbness has worn off that you're able to get up, up and out of bed just gently and go to the toilet and, and that kind of thing. Um, if you feel that you're unable to get out of bed because it's too painful then you must ask for further pain relief from the midwives. The pain relief that it was given um, was some morphine and paracetamol and um, a drug they said was called diclofenac which is I think like ibuprofen or neurofen. But it was the morphine that was the, they gave that to me to drink and that was the medication that definitely helped with the pain. By the next morning I wasn't really needing any morphine or anything like that. I was just having the regular paracetamol and um, diclofenac I was taking that regularly. Um, and when I came home I was probably still taking those for another few days um, and then I, would, I stopped taking the diclofenac and then the paracetamol so within a week I would have thought that if I did, had to take the painkillers for really. The main discomfort was um, getting up out of bed to go and pick up the baby. That, that was a bit that was, that was the hardest part and that was the most uncomfortable part. Getting around, walking around there wasn't any discomfort. I had no infections afterwards, um, the wounds cleaned, healed up really nicely, the scars looking better every day, I had, had no after effects at all. Most uh, ladies who have caesareans here have a, a very positive experience, um, we are all very friendly, we will make you very welcome, answer any questions, more than happy to answer any questions that you have um, and look after you so you can meet your baby.